Okay, now that we're done the animation, I'm just going to finish up this geometry on the after crack, I mean in the after crack group. So right now it's just one solid surface. We don't want that, so we're going to separate the geometry. I have it selected, and I'm going to the polygons menu set, and I'm going to mesh separate. So now it's two objects inside the polysurface 2 group. I'm going to ungroup polysurface because I want these two surface surfaces to be individual. They don't need to be inside a group. And I'm going to delete by type history, not all by type. Deleting all by type deletes all the history in your scene, including our animated balloon, and we don't want that. So we're just going to delete by type, which just deletes the history of the selected objects. So now that we've done that, we have two objects that we can clean up the geometry on. Because right now it's really bad geometry. You don't want to, let's say if I'm, which I will be adding a dynamic simulation to this, they'll have a very hard time finding intersections due to this vast space we have here of a whole bunch of polygons and edge, I mean a whole bunch of edges and vortexes. So we're going to break this up by triangulating it. We could just select both objects and going to mesh triangulate but I don't like the stretched across geometry. I mean, it's just fine, but I just don't like the looks of it, and you can make it cleaner. So, I still have the two objects selected. I'm going to the overhead view. I'm going to use the cut face tool again, and I'm adding a slice right in the middle of the objects. This help breaks, this help breaks up the geometry. So now when I go to mesh triangulate, it's just a little cleaner, a little nicer. So I'm going to select both of them and delete history. So that's about it. You can apply whatever whatever, whatever anim animation you want to this. But I'm going to add a quick dynamic simulation. This isn't a dynamic simulation tutorial, so it will be quick. I'm going to start off by creating a, another box. I want these pieces to fall onto it. It'll be a bit of, I'll shape it into a wedge. I'm just going to make it larger than a hunk of ice. Sticking it to the top. Switch over to the move tool. Nope, oh, lost it. Switch over to the move tool on the end. Just to give it a general wedge like shape. Okay, now I'm adding a polyplane. Scaling that up nice and big. Putting that below the wedge. And I'm going to select both of these objects and freeze their transformations and delete their individual history. Remember, not all history, that will wipe out the entire scene. So, I want to make these collision objects, so I'm going to go to Dynamics and make them passive rigid bodies. And these will be active rigid bodies because these are the pieces that we actually want to move. So I'm going to make them active rigid bodies. Now I'm going to back it up and play the animation. And as you can see, nothing happens because we need to add gravity to these active rigid bodies. So with them still selected, I'm going to Fields, Gravity. Backing up the animation and playing it. This goes just fine, but when we get to frame 26 and these pieces become visible, they've already fallen down onto the collision objects. We want them to start falling when they become visible. So we need to change the start frame of the dynamic simulation. To do that, we're going to Solvers and we're going to go to Rigid Body Solver Attributes. This will open up the rigid body, I mean, this will open up the attributes editor with rigid bodies loaded into them. I mean, with the rigid body solver loaded into them. And I'm setting the start time to the start frame of when we want our animation to start, which is frame 26. So now, when we play the animation, they only start to fall after our balloon animation has completed. I'm just going to add some frames to this animation so we can see them drop all the way. No longer need to see the grid. And there we go. I have a finished rendered animation showing us what this would look like rendered with an occlusion map. It's got to open the animation in here somewhere. There we go. View sequence. Wait for it to load. Alright, so this. Um, crack. Ah, oh, it's in a layer. There you go. Here's the animation, what it looks like when it's finished. It's just loading the frames. This crack, I added a little bit more um, noise to the core, so it would be a bit more interesting. You can do whatever you want with it. And here's what it would look like finished. 
and rendered. Thanks for watching this tutorial.